fixing my 5090 Founders Edition, which is running the EKWB water block, and it is cracked. Uh, we're gonna be pulling the plexi off and replacing the plexi, okay? I'm gonna take a look here. You can see this one's splitting out there, and this one's cracking. It's got very high flow rate. Almost looks like it's pushing some kind of blue out. Take a look at that. Try to get a good, look at that right there. That looks like that's gonna leak. Anyways, got this going on here as well. All these are okay, so no issues anywhere else. Connector here. Looking beautiful. That is a full coverage thermal pad on the back side. Covers the entire PCB, which works very well. All right, I'll see you guys in a moment. All right, uh, before we get started, gonna run through just what I'm using. Uh, of course, you're gonna need your uh, new Plexi top for the uh, water block. It also comes with a new little logo. That piece right there. You know, a few tools here, leak tester, all right, this is my little assortment of different thermal interface materials. I'm gonna be using this super cool liquid metal. I heard this stuff holds up really well. The back plate is held on with four screws. For the back plate, I know it's gonna be stuck on really well just because of the thermal pad, so I'll be right back. All right, this is a peek at the back side of how I have my thermal pad laid out. The thermal pad covers everything on the back of the GPU, anything that's important anyways. And we have a small area cut out for the little LED. And these are really soft thermal pads. You can buy them on Optimus uh, water cooling website. And I think they're like maybe $30, but they're three millimeter thick and they're extremely soft. Just cut them to shape. It doesn't, you know, they, they're, they're not gonna have one for every single video card. You can buy one for a 3090, a 4090, a 50, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a big thermal pad. All right, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the PCI Express a connector here. I'll show you how easy this is. Right here, I'm gonna loosen this one. Very similar. have a few that are actually holding down the PCI Express connector here on the side. I'm gonna loosen these. We're gonna go ahead and lift our metal frame up, set it aside, and it's gonna just unplug just like that, okay? And there's your plug right there, all right? You can see a little bit of that juice from the thermal pad, <laughs> but that's okay. These are kind of oily pads. This plug here, that's the plug for our input output. You can see it runs from here all the way up to our display port and HDMI cables. That's another easy plug. Once it's unplugged, we can actually remove this whole IO shield here, but it's braced incredibly well, I will say that. All right, let me go ahead and get that unplugged. And once you are unplugging this, it's really just a matter of lifting it up with your fingernail, and that's it. All right, everybody, this is the 5090 Founders Edition. We got our plug unplugged here. And we can see there's actually two, all right? This is our one for our PCI Express connector. And this is the one for the IO shield, which is this component here. And there's our plug, which just loops around. Our eight screws that hold in our display port HDMI. Don't want to over tighten these, they're literally screwing into like some tinsel, very thin metal material there, right? So just finger tight, that's it. Here, and then I think it's just four screws that hold the PCB one, two, three, and then there's actually one of them there. So it's really just one, two, three, four that hold the black thing, and four that hold the PCB. This is a very thick. PCB. I mean, one of the thickest on a GPU. I'm just use a 
little bit each just to get some of the some of the torque off I'm not going all the way loose all right everybody this is our little support frame lifted off we are going to set this aside we're going to leave our screws in there and we're going to take a look at our pcb now so here taking a look at the pcb and it's literally just four screws one two three four we're going to go ahead and remove these and we're going to lift off the entire gpu from the water block starting now there we go all righty there's our board we'll go ahead and just set this right here take a look at our liquid metal we're gonna be redoing this. Uh, I'm gonna be pulling all of it off both sides and we're gonna be redoing our little metal, okay? Thermal pad contact looks good. We can see a nice imprint on everything. Hey everybody, I did wanna also cover this. I just removed the gasket. I'm just cleaning up the liquid metal. Uh, no liquid metal gets underneath the gasket. It physically cannot. You can see it traps it all edge of the die and right now I'm just taking an alcohol q-tip and we're carefully running around the edge of the die to get up all the liquid metal okay you don't want any liquid metal to touch the small little components because it can get stuck there you're gonna have to go ahead and get a brush and alcohol and you don't want it splattering anywhere you gotta be careful when you're handling liquid metal you use a paper towel to wipe liquid metal they're literally one-time use when you wipe there's going to be tiny little beads of liquid metal everywhere. You're going to have to remove the paper towel and get another one, okay? Um, you're going to have to be careful with what's on your fingertips. So I would like wipe your fingertips off on your pants or something else just to remove any tiny liquid metal particles because you don't want that stuff splashing on your board or anywhere else. You can see you have liquid metal around the edges on the inside, but it doesn't go past that and it doesn't go underneath that area, okay? So what we're doing now is we're just carefully running around the edge with a Q-tip that is covered in alcohol, okay? We're running across the edge to collect it. We're and we're running across this edge. Running across this edge. All right, so we had some liquid metal over here. Just wiping this down with alcohol. You can just blow it off momentarily but now we can set it down okay and we'll polish it here soon as far as the water block side this really is going to have to be polished right here and here that are three-dimensional they're like little grains of sand and that's going to prevent good dye contact so you have to polish this with wet polish otherwise it will not work very well this is why you always have to be careful with liquid metal. There is a tiny little speck right there. It's just a little liquid metal piece, just chilling. You know, little beads of liquid metal get stuck to your fingers and you go lift up your PCB, it's gonna transfer. Uh, so I would just make sure you're careful whenever you're doing this. We're gonna put down our gasket back down on the die. After. We're gonna polish that up a little bit and uh, we go put the gasket down after it's clean and we are finished. if there happens to be any pieces stuck to it. We're gonna go around the actual die. Just make sure we don't have any in there. And then we're gonna do it again just briefly. circles here. Just want to cover the whole die. Just want to make it look nice and mirror finish. 
And this is really the process for any time you're using liquid metal. Just remember that. Right, just preparing some sandpaper here. This is 600 grit. Um, we're trying to get our surface smooth on the water block with the 5090. I'm not able to get through it with flints. And it has little tiny specks that have hardened on there. So we gotta make sure that we sand this. sanding it don't go through the nickel don't go grab some crazy like 80 grit you just want to lightly sand this and prep it for the new liquid metal and that's all you got to do okay and we're going to keep using fresh alcohol till our towel isn't black anymore and we're going to be good to go all right and we're going to go ahead and proceed and place the plexi on this we're gonna go ahead and proceed and remove our plexi here. If anything happens, I'm get all these loose. And I'm just gonna go across and spin them. All right, everybody, we got the block cleaned up a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and lay the plexi on there. And once they are all tight. We'll go around and get everyone really snug with my fingers. As tight as I can get it with my fingers. And we'll make sure it's airtight. We'll leak do a leak test. It's looking good so far because it is not cracked. All right, we're just doing a leak test real quick, making sure this is good. We've torqued everything down. Block looks nice. We can see that it is not leaking. We're at like 0.75 bar. The test is good. We're gonna put the block back on the GPU. By the way, this is the old block and we can take a look at it. This is the inside. And this is, this is what it looks like. So we can see the shattering here. I actually dropped it just on the floor. Oh, there it goes. Here goes a whole piece of it. Just came out. Just to show you how fragile this really is when they do get a crack. So uh, even though it wasn't leaking, it was trying to. And uh, yeah, that's it. See where it was trying to leak. You can see blue inside of this crack, which was forcing out. And you could see it underneath the screw hole. And then of course, inside of here. So it was trying to leak. It wasn't dripping, but I think it would have slowly reached that point with the, you know, 430, 450 liters an hour. Um, so yeah, if you have a crack in your plexi, I would say there's a good chance it's gonna leak. Uh, as far as the block, we're gonna call it good and we're gonna stop this test and we're gonna get this thing finished and put back together. All right, everybody, we went ahead and opened up our super cool computer, liquid metal. And we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff spread on the 5090 die. And of course, well, the 5090 die and the 101, all right? So we gotta put our gasket down too, which we'll go ahead and do that now. We do have our gasket. Make sure there's nothing sticking to the back. And we're gonna go ahead and lay this guy down. Just make sure it's nice and even. You know, this is the first time I've used this stuff, so I'm kind of curious how it is gonna react, you know? But we got a few things back together so far, and all I did was I laid our little plate on, 
screw, 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 and screw. And then we put in our four screws around the PCB. We plug in our IO, which is our input output cable. And then we go ahead and plug down our PCI Express, which is a modular PCI Express plug on this car. And we're gonna just tighten these down a little bit here. Okay, perfect. The, these screws are filled in by the back plate. So all we do now at this point, all right, so once the PCI Express connector, the slot is actually screwed down, you got six screws holding it and a little brace there. It is extremely solid. Like it doesn't feel, you know, flexible or anything. Cause it's mounting down to this thick plate here, which is like, this right here is all aluminum. And that's going through the PCB and it keeps everything nice and rigid. All right, we got a thermal pad back on. We got our IO shield mounted. Everything is secured. And we're gonna go ahead and put our back plate back on and uh, that's it. All right, and that's it. The card is back together. It is looking good and um, happy with the new Plexi. Uh, everything looks great. We flip it over. Hey, this has always been a thick uh, graphics card. You know, very, very thick block. You can see the full cover thermal pad on that back side there. Kind of covers the entire, entire PCB, which uh, works extremely well. And that's actually the IO shield right there. That's our, uh, well, well, not the IO shield, it's the IO cable. You see how it plugs into the back of the board comes up through the front. This is hidden because this part goes against your motherboard. But uh, that's it, everything's done, ready to go. We're just gonna put in uh, these QD3 quick disconnect fittings. done back together no cracks everything looks great all right i'm putting it back in the computer that's that all right just to touch on this a little bit it's going to be the end of the video here i appreciate everybody watching if you made it this far taking a look at our water temperature on the 5090 that is our inlet temperature right there which is right before it goes into the 5090 and then we're gonna take a look at our actual 5090 temperature, which is 26.2. So it's essentially idling one degree over the water inlet temperature right now, which is looking great so far during this process. I'm still bleeding all of the air out of the system. We have this pump off, this pump off. And of course we have that pump unplugged. And we're just running our 1D5 to get all the air out. Still got a lot of air trapped in this thing and it's kind of tough, uh, but it is coming out slowly, but surely. Um, again, I appreciate everybody for uh, watching the video. It's very easy to change the Plexi on a 5090 Founders Edition water block because you don't have to remove the terminal. You don't even have to remove it. And it is the easiest top that I've ever changed on a GPU before. And um, that's really all I can say about it. Just make sure you leak test your GPU and that's it. I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.